Hey guys, welcome to my channel today we are going to doing what if Krillin was reincarnated also if you like my videos, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell, and make sure you have it on all with that out of the way, make sure to join the discord let's begin. Quick note there may be some mature content chapter 25. Fight with the cold brothers. I was staring down Cooler as he kept his guard up against me, he saw how some of my dots were shining on my forehead, and he knew I was already above his power level a bit, he was already trying to go on his fifth form. Cooler said after we stared at each other for a while. Your survival intrigues me, it seems you can also survive in space as my clan can, your lack of nose seems to explain you not needing oxygen though. I kept a serious face at his words, Goku could technically fight full power Frieza with a combination of Ikari mode and Kaken without the need of Super Saiyan, hopefully, no one would die against Frieza. I trained all of them thoroughly to make sure nothing untoward would happen to them. Cooler shouted as his armor started to encase him and he bolted up, veins appeared around him, he knew his energy consumption would increase by quite a lot, but he felt how I was stronger than before, he decided to give his all from the start. All of my dots started shining as I buffed up using my full power technique, our power levels now were similar, both exceeding 1 billion, Cooler narrowed his red pupil less eyes at me, and started to charge at me, he threw a right hook at me which I parried and countered with a roundhouse kick. He took in full brunt with his arms defending his chest in an X position, he grunted and started to charge tiny death beams on his fingers which he quickly shot at me. I dodged by milliseconds, while well, the death beam was fast and had great piercing power. It couldn't kill if it didn't hit a vital point, it was also easily parable, as example when Goku was below Frieza's power level in his final form, and he could parry it with his hand, albeit with difficulty. I used my instant transmission, to directly appear behind Cooler, and ran him through with a concentrated revolving sphere of Kai. His back immediately exploded as a huge tear appeared in it. He growled and used his tail to grab my hand and threw me away, while he charged a purple giant beam and shot it at me. I cut the beam in half with the golden Kai side which I created hastily, and buffed it up with my magic to increase its sharpness. Kula was annoyed as he cauterized his back wound with a bit of Kai stopping its bleeding, he knew I still had some techniques that could increase my power level, but I didn't use them, the only chance for him to survive was to somehow be able to escape. He didn't care about Frieza, he would be glad if Frieza died here, he was jealous of his brother's high power level upon birth, and how his father viewed Frieza better than himself. I could send several high-ish power levels make their way in space pods towards Namek, if my guess was right it was the Jinyu force. I telepathically told the people on Namek to make sure they didn't kill Jai Subberter, they could hurt them, but not kill them. Vegeta grumbled down on Namek at my words, he wasn't going to promise anything, Goku nodded to himself while he clashed with Frieza, while the others made sure to remember my explanation of Jai's and Berter's features, so they wouldn't kill them. While the two Jinyu members weren't to be killed the others were game though. Frieza immediately used his third form superior speed to ditz Goku in the stomach, and he started to fire death beams as fast as a machine gun from his finger. Goku either deflected, or dodged them, after he got struck by a few due to him being stunned from the stomach hit. He started to increase his Kaken, but Frieza didn't let him concentrate on the technique properly, knowing that if he let the Saiyan increase his power level by too much would spell his doom. He immediately started to charge upon his final form his arms by his sides as his power level increased directly to 50% of his normal. Making him reach 60 million, Goku gasped as he stopped using Kaken, and directly used Ikari mode increasing his power level to 15 million, he also used Kaken times 4 to match Frieza's power level. Frieza couldn't sense Kai, but he could sense the air of savagery around Goku, as his hair started to spike up, combined with the red aura that encased him now, he knew that the continuing fight won't be easy for him at all. Aqua Cooler I started to use my Golden Kai side, to try to hack him into pieces he had his guard up against me, knowing that I could increase my power level with a burst and kill him, so he was ready to make a retreat and run away with his spaceship anytime. Spaceships had void traveling capabilities which would increase their speed by quite a lot, even though it couldn't compare to my spaceship speed, his could travel from galaxy to galaxy in few months, while mine would take half as much time. I wasn't sure where the cold's planet was, and I wasn't sure of King Cold's full power either, so I needed to make sure both Cooler and Frieza died here without alerting Cold about it, if they made their way back and informed him of my power, I would lose the surprise tactic I could use against him. Cooler couldn't be distracted by anything now as he dodged my attempts at hacking him in two with the scythe, he was fully concentrated on my figure, and I smirked, while I turned off the Kai scythe, and put my hands near my face and shouted, Solar Flare. A blinding light engulfed Cooler's whitened eyes as he screamed. You I will kill you and your whole family and planet you how dare you. But it was too late for him, already blinded I charged my destructo disc and bifurcated him into two, he gasped as he couldn't feel his lower body anymore, and I made sure he couldn't get it back as I destroyed it with a handful of Kai. Cooler was still alive, his species could even survive being cut into two, their will was tenacious, and so was their physique. Cooler growled as his eyesight restored and looked down at his non-existent lower part. 
I didn't know how his race multiplied, but now he didn't have a little friend anymore, it all became dust. Before Cooler could do anything else I created a long golden sword which extended out of my fingers and impaled him through the head. His power level was halved as he wasn't a hole anymore. I nodded my head Vegito's spear sword was a good technique which I added to my arsenal right now. Back on planet Namek, Goku and Frieza were interlocked in a deadly fight, as the other continued to watch the fight. The Jinyu members' bodies were strewn here and there. The captain was laid down on Namek's ground. Face up his body had a huge hole through the middle. It seemed he couldn't use his change technique to get anyone this time. Dice and Birder were tied with Kai rope, and were looking at everyone with fear in their eyes. Not knowing what their fate was, Jai said in a trembling voice towards Birder. Mate, I think this is it for us. They might eat us alive now. We don't know for sure what these two clubs, midget and Saiyans, will do to us. It was an honor to fight alongside you in the mighty Jinyu force. Birder stuttered out and said. Well said Jais, it seems I buffed my confidence up till now for nothing I'm not the fastest in the universe. Jais comforted him with words making him feel better. Vegeta scoffed at the duo's interaction. He was ready to kill both of them. But the human Yamcha stopped him. Their power levels were similar. And Yamcha still had the stand and cake and technique under his belt. Vegeta was humiliated at the thought of the earthlings becoming stronger than him, but he remembered that I was an earthling as well, and didn't say anything anymore. From the reports, he got when he first came to earth he was sure it said that earthlings had dirt low potential for fighting, but it seemed whoever made those reports was retarded. Apul sneezed in a faraway Frieza planet, he survived this ordeal by his post being changed at the last second not going to Namek. I stood hidden and observed the fight between Goku and Frieza, when suddenly out of the corner of the eye Frieza shot a death beam directly towards Yamcha's heart, Goku tried to deflect it, but he wasn't fast enough. Yamcha almost got hit by it, but I put a magic barrier between him and the beam, and the beam got dispersed. Yamcha sweated intensely, he almost got Yamcha today, fortunately, I acted quickly enough so he didn't die. But Frieza wasn't done yet, he tried to hit everyone else with his beams, knowing he couldn't do anything to Goku without powering up to 100%. He was reluctant to do so, his power would drain extremely fast in that form, as he used it very rarely. He didn't want to get exhausted by fighting WTH Goku, then possibly die at some of these weakling hands. He decided to try to attack everyone as a distraction and run away, he didn't want to fight anymore, he wasn't sure how Cooler was doing up in the stratosphere, but he didn't care much either, he could die for all he cared anyway. Frieza was ready to make a run for it, but Goku suddenly appeared around him and caught him by the tail, he was ready to do his famous meteor combination. Goku threw Frieza and appeared in front of him catching him, the impact of the throw and the immediate catch, immediately put a burden on Frieza's body, Goku hit Frieza directly in the chest, making him full, as he started to fly up and charge a Kamehameha at him. Frieza tried to get up, but he was disorientated, and his whole body hurt from the attack. He knew he couldn't hold back anymore as his body buffed up and veins appeared all over it, he charged a giant beam in his left hand and shot it at Goku, Goku also shot his Kamehameha over, and they clashed in midair. The power between them reached above 120 million, Frieza was giving his all, and was breaking his limits. Goku increased his kicking, and it started to push the beam back down to Frieza, Frieza grunted as a maniacal light appeared in his eyes, if the emperor of the galaxy was going down, he was going to take some people with him. He was ready to directly shoot the planet with his other hand, but I stopped him with my telekinesis, he couldn't move his hand at all his kai was botched in him, unable to use his other hand to shoot the planet and destroy it. He looked at me with fear in his eyes, and realized that Cooler was already dead, his brother's strongest behind his father was dead. He knew he had no chance of survival here, but out of sheer will he pointed his finger at Rashi, and shot him in the lungs with a weakened death beam, he didn't know of my healing abilities, so he wanted to take at least one of the weaker members of the party out. Seeing a defenseless old man it was his prime target. I was surprised then thoroughly angered by him. I immediately appeared near Rashi as he coughed up blood. Fortunately, he didn't hit his heart or else he would have died instantly. I started to heal him and after a few seconds he was right back up. Goku influenced by his Ikarimo, immediately started to see red when he saw Rashi go down. His cake and dropped, but his head veins started to show as he screamed. Grandpa. His power level was skyrocketing at enormous amounts as his Akari mode was still on. His hair started to turn golden, as his power level broke through the 150 million range, and it was still increasing. It finally stopped at 350 million, as his form stabilized, well he could use Akari mode and Super Saiyan. He wasn't the legendary Super Saiyan, so he couldn't get the extremely high power level boost like Broly. The power level multiplier was a surprising 230 or so times, from a million and a half to 350 million. Goku was panting hard as his energy was going down by the second, it seemed his body couldn't adapt to the combination either, he would need to train long and hard to master it, and if he ever lost his tail, he couldn't use the Ikari mode combination either. 
Of course, I was already impressed that he could reach this power. Goku started to calm down as his reason got back to him. He saw Hirashi was okay, but he didn't drop his transformation. He charged a Kamehameha wave and extinguished Frieza from existence right then and there. It seemed to Karimote and Super Saiyan influenced each other and made the user way more uncontrolled and ruthless. Goku's combined transformation dropped, and he flew slowly to the ground where he collapsed. Raditz came over and gave him a senzu bean which he swallowed, and he immediately got back up his power level double to 3 million. Vegeta was looking at Goku with envy, seemingly realizing that was the legendary transformation of the race. Nappa was looking at Goku with stars in his eyes, as he made his way towards him, and asked how he did it. Goku seemingly tried to explain, but he didn't know where to start, he just transformed once, and he wasn't sure of the certain trigger behind the transformation besides immense rage. Vegeta listened to the explanation from some distance away, Raditz was also listening, all of them wanted to become a Super Saiyan as well. I let them talk with each other, while Gura nodded from his seat and told Nail. Nail, go gather the Dragon Balls it's time for my TV. But Lord Gura we do not even have cable on the planet. Wish for that as well then, get your ass in shape and go wish for it. Piccolo sweat dropped at the interaction between his fellow Namekians when suddenly Nail came towards him and said. Brother I can't take guarding this guy anymore, let me teach you a special technique which will increase your power level and relieve me from this eternal torture. Nail immediately grabbed Piccolo's hand as he started to transform into Blue Kai and disappear. Piccolo's power level immediately increased to 3 million and 500 thousand and it seemed like it would increase even more in the future. Burr immediately shouted as he pointed at Piccolo's head. And a -L, -L, l I know you are in there you can't shirk of your responsibilities you took a vow. Nail immediately said in Piccolo's head. Quick hide me inside some of your memories or something. Piccolo was dumbfounded at all that was happening, but he was also happy at the increase in power. So he did just like Nail asked him. Guru tried to sense Nail again, but he thoroughly disappeared, out of nowhere a little Namikian was summoned by Guru and said. Then from now on you will be the next guardian, your first job acquired television and cable. Den was flustered and he didn't know what to say. Guru put his hand on Den's head, and he unlocked his potential and continued. Chop chop, I want that television already. I sweat dropped as well at the interaction, I took all of the training machines, and dematerialized the stage where they were put on. It was time to go back to Earth, well at least for the others I had to deliver Jice back to his planet in Jaika. It didn't take much time to deliver everyone back to the lookout and make my way back towards Namek. I could already see the giant dragon in the sky saying. Television, Cable are you sure about these wishes? Wait you want to change cable to universal cable so you can see every show in the universe. Okay, what about the third wish then? Uh, I can't bring back Nail since he doesn't want that. Burr immediately said. That traitor, after all, I did for him, he decided to run away with another Namikian. He took his vows. It seemed it wasn't an opportunate moment, so I grabbed both Jice and Birder, and used my instant transmission to go back to Space Australia. Daika was cooking Raymond in the kitchen when I suddenly appeared in two with her brother and his best friend. Jice's eyes whitened when he saw his sister, I undid the Kai bindings on him, as Jack ran towards Jice as embraced him, and they smiled at me and said. You followed up on your promise Mr. Krillin. Jice looked at me and Jaika with a questioning gaze, Birder was just staying around awkwardly not knowing what to say, he knew of Jaika as he talked with her during the time she talked with Jice. Jaika let go of Jice and started to recount our meeting, omitting the other more sensitive parts of the story. Jice gasped, then looked at me and said with a grateful tone of voice. I see mate so that's how it is, I'm grateful that you spared me and my friend Birder, I wasn't a big fan of Frieza's force anyway, but the pay was good, and I was forcefully enrolled I couldn't quit even if I wanted to, Frieza would have my head and my sisters for it. So I did something that I'm not proud of during the years I worked under him. I nodded my head towards him and said. You can be redeemed as you still have a conscience, the same can be said about your friend, I can feel the aura of sin from the both of you, but it can be cleaned, be a peace both of you. They nodded their heads towards my words, and Jaika was glowing with happiness, as I made my way back with her brother, and kept my promise. I decided to do something during this time. Jaika, Jice, Birder, I know people on this planet will fear you since you previously worked with Frieza, would you like to move with me to Earth? Also, you two could help me to read out the other forces of Frieza's and coolers of the North Galaxy and West Galaxy and East Galaxy, this could help you cleanse your sins. Jaika was already packing up, while Jice and Birder were looking at each other then smiled, both nodding their head towards me. Maybe I could give them work in the Space Patrol Force or whatever it was called after this, they could use some relatively strong people in there. After Jaika packed up I took all of them back to Earth, I left Jaika at my house, and told her to get comfortable, while I took Jice and Birder towards the lookout, so they could train themselves with the others before we got to exterminate the remaining Cold Family forces of the galaxy. Next time King Cold will die as well, and the Cold Family won't terrorize the galaxy with their antics anymore.
I told Vegeta and the others of their circumstances, and Nappa and Raditz agreed on coming with us so they could cleanse their sins as well. Vegeta scoffed at the invitation, and continued to train in the gravity chamber. He turned the gravity directly to 300, and continued to do push-ups. He wanted to gain the power of a Super Saiyan as well, he couldn't let a low-class warrior like Kakara continuing to surpass him the prince. I decided to let Vegeta do his thing, it wasn't my job to take care of him, he could reach the Super Saiyan form by himself just like he did in the Anime, his training was effective. I decided to train Jais and Birder. The Popo came out of nowhere and said that he would train the red and blue guys himself. Popo already reached the power level of 520,000 and he could rival Frieza in his first form. I decided to let the two of them taste Popo's training and left to check up on the dojo. Everyone that trained in the dojo reached an average power level of 50, and Kai Kai also started to train Gohan. Gohan's power level already reached 10,000, his talent wasn't there for nothing. Kai Kai also grew stronger by training with her son, and reached the power level of 15,000, and it was still growing. Nam's power level reached 1,500, I also added some more instructors from the more talented dojo practitioners. Somehow Hercule made his way here, and his power level was already 200. It seemed he had some talent for martial arts after all. I decided to let him become an instructor as well, so he could get a better income combined with his restaurant, so he could support his family better. From what I got from him, it seemed his wife ran the restaurant while he came to train here. He thanked me after he heard that I saw potential in him and put him in the position of instructor. He had tears in his eyes. It seemed he wanted someone to realize that he was talented in martial arts. It seemed he didn't take Vittle with him this time. Well when the time would come it would come. Gohan was here every day. It seemed there was fate at work with some couples around. Was there any fate between me and 18 here, or did my spirit broke it? I was thoroughly different from the normal Krillin. It was the difference between the sky and earth. I wasn't sure she would even like me. I decided to make my way home on foot. When I entered my house I was met by a half-naked Jaika eating lunch from my refrigerator. I coughed and she looked towards me with a blush on her face, and she stuttered out. Then she stopped stuttering and continued. Well you know I like to be freer when I'm inside the house, it makes me feel better. She pushed her chest forward pushing her majestic orbs forward, it seemed like they grew again. They were a bit bigger than before. She looked at me with expectant eyes, I didn't know what to say, I think it was okay since I had no other contact with 18, so it wasn't cheating on her, but in the future would I have to break up with Jaika if 18 liked me? It didn't seem right. But what if I could have both? Jaika seemed pretty open-minded, so I decided to ask her directly. Jaika, what would you think if I, uh, I was in a relationship with you, and I wanted to add on more women in the equation? Jaika put a finger on her chin and took a pondering face, and she responded seconds after. I wouldn't mind, the leader on our planet has 60 wives, people with strength and authority can have more than one wife in my opinion, if you can make the other women you are interested in agreeing as well, I don't see any problem myself. What an understanding red-skinned lady. Since she was so open-minded I decided we need to have a little fun, before I made my way around the universe, purging the remaining of Frieza's and Cooler's forces. After a fun time that consisted of three days and nights, I decided it was time to go and cleanse the universe of the remains of the Cold Empire. If I found Cold as well it would be for the best, I could destroy the problem at its core. Chapter 26. Cleansing the universe of its malady. I was standing on the lookout waiting for everyone to make sure they were ready. I would use my spaceship and go directly from planet to planet. If the grunts would give up I will spare them, but they would have to work or store the planets and free their population if the planets were subjugated. I thought thoroughly about the plan after I took care of King Cold and the rest of the subjugated planets. I would make sure no one else would lust after the Cold's family riches by becoming the new figurehead of the intergalactic criminal organization. I would just cease all of the illegal work and transform it into something else. Maybe I could use all of the riches gathered by King Cold to restore damaged planets, save extinct species, and continue growing the mortal level of the universe that way. I nodded my head towards Jais, Birder, and the two Saiyans. The Saiyans both learned how to control themselves in their grade 8 mode, and their power level increased to above 150,000. Jais and Birder reached the power level of 90,000, and even created their stance with a little bit of my help. They were pretty talented, even though Frieza was a giant egomaniac with a penchant of destroying planets that he found in Isor, he did have a good eye for talent. Birder's stand was a blue hedgehog with green eyes, it looked quite cute, his power level increased by 6 times. Jais's stand was simply a kangaroo the mascot of his home planet Space Australia, his power level increased by 6.5 times. They were ready for the journey. The only remnants of Frieza's and Cooler's empires were only the weaklings the Jinyu Force, and Cooler's armored squadron was already history. I popped open the spaceship's capsule, and it appeared in all of its of glory. We entered the spaceship, and with Jice's and Birder's information about Frieza's planets we started our liberation of them with the nearest one, being Frieza Planet 696932. 
The planet wasn't anything special its inhabitants already drained of their will to live. The grunts immediately surrendered after they heard of the news which started spreading in the galaxy of both tyrants' deaths. King Cold would be informed now as well, but my power level now reached above 15 million almost 16 million, and I could use the super mode with the full power technique, godspeed and kick in up to 6 times. Besides Perfect Cell, there would be no one else who would be my match. Well besides Bu who was way stronger than me and Umbiris and Whis and everyone else that came in Dragon Ball Super. I was quite strong for the time, but I couldn't slack off my training anymore, I needed to be sure I could take everything that would come next, at least Beerus could be easily appeased with good food. And I could do my best right now to increase the universe's average mortal level. It was a good thing to happen, even if we didn't get excluded from the tournament, having a stronger universe would lead to better life prospects to every living being. I could feel that my benevolent Buddha stand was quite interfering with my core personality, but it wasn't in a negative way, I could feel that it purified my mind, and it increased my Kai's purity as well, everything was good, even though I did become more benevolent and hero-like. It wasn't truly a bad thing as I wasn't a weakling trying to get himself killed by being too heroic. I continued to liberate planets left and right, I didn't do the groundwork myself letting the others cleanse their sins. I could feel their ori purify with time and surprisingly, Radis and Nappa grew stronger by doing this, I could some special cells multiplying in them waiting to be awakened. I wasn't truly familiar with Saiyan biology, besides knowing that they got stronger every time they came from near death, and the ability to evolve during extreme stress, also being known as becoming a super Saiyan. I used my Kai sense in combination with my magic to examine deep inside their bodies, and I could see some special golden cells multiplying in the back of their necks. With their auras full of sin they had none, but as the sins got erased, and the good karma started to gather those cells came into being. Murder and Jice got no such things however, but they did get more proficient with their stands, as they fought to liberate countless planets. It took us approximately 2 months to cleanse the whole north galaxy, King Cold should have heard about everything by now, but seemingly he wasn't trying to stop us. Maybe he was scared. I was trying to bait him out of his hole and exterminate him out of his home planet, but it seemed it was impossible. Dice and Birder knew of the Colts clan stronghold, they got there with Freeze during one family meeting, where the subordinates would have to show their might, of course, they lost miserably against Cooler Armored Squadron, even their mighty Captain Jin Yu couldn't touch Salz's boots. I decided to input the coordinates of the Colts origin planet into the spaceship and get it going, it won't take us much till we could reach the planet with my spaceship's fast speed. And so in a few days, we were there. I could feel an immense Kai reaching almost 2 billion in number waiting for us down there. It seemed Cold was ready for us, I decided to let them stay on the spaceship, so they wouldn't become collateral damage, I didn't save Raditz and Nappa, so they'd just go and die again, same could be said about Jice and Birder, I also didn't want Jika to be sad due to her brother's death. I decided to confront him alone, I appeared directly into Cold's throne room, he was in his final form seemingly resembling Frieza's, but buffer with green gems instead of purple, he was also way taller than Frieza. He was spinning a bit of wine in his glass as he looked outside at the scenery, he didn't turn towards me but started to talk. So you are the one responsible for all these damages done to my empire and the death of my two sons. He didn't sound angry, but his tone was bone chilling cold, I grunted an affirmation, he got up from his chair that he lunged on, and damn he was truly taller when he got up, he was 2 meters and 30 centimeters tall. He towered over my form easily as he crushed the wine glass in his pale palm, and veins started to appear around him, as he buffed up further, his power level doubled to 4 billion in number, as he charges an extremely high amount of Kai in his hands, ready to detonate at any moment. I immediately turned on my 6 dots combined with my full power technique, as I started to buff up and grew to 2 meters tall pure white electricity, started to arc around me, combined with a faint red aura, I used the base form of the Kaken, to increase my power level by 1.5 times. Rivaling called in power and even eclipsing him by a 500 million. He detonated the Kai and the surroundings exploded. Kai turned the icy planet into a water planet. At our power levels uninhibited use of Kai would destroy planets in seconds. We didn't even need to hit the core of the planet to destroy it. Of course, planets with a stronger mortal level would be harder to destroy. But this planet had some of his grunts, and himself it was deserted. His race was extinct after all, and he now was the last survivor. He shot towards me immediately afterwards using his bulky giant form to his advantage as we clashed in power. His height and weight gave him an edge over me, even though my power level was a bit more superior. So I decided to not play into his strength, I started to dodge around quickly by emphasizing my god speed. His eyes moved around trying to predict my moves, it seemed he was a veteran of fighting, he could only create such a big empire upon a mountain of corpses, and of course, when he started he wouldn't have any henchmen to do his work. I blitzed directly to his right as his tail suddenly slapped me in the face, I decided to take a page out of Goku's book and bit it thoroughly, his face immediately turned purple as he tried to get his tail out of my mouth. 
I kept it tightly clenched with my teeth, and I started to pour barrage of punches towards his stomach. My superior power level gave me a higher attacking power, good enough to pierce through his buff muscles and thick skin. He started to vomit bile as I let go of his tail as he shot towards a nearby mountain. I appeared in front of his figure, that was clambering to get to his feet, and dropped him in the head. He became disoriented. Even though the Kull clan's physique was very strong, that only counted against people with the same power level or lower power level than them. People with higher power levels could pierce trough their physiques if they had the knowledge where to head them. I could use my magic and Kai sense to identify weaknesses trough his body so it was easy. I put one fist in front of the other and took a boxer stance. I quite liked Hit's fighting style, so I decided to copy him this time. Combined with my extremely fast speed it was basically like using time skip against cold. I hit him over all of his body with Kai enhanced fists, as rays of golden Kai started to appear behind his back and punch trough. Blood started to seep out of the corner of his mouth as he smirked. Suddenly he lunged at me, and tried to give me a big hug. Unfortunately for him, I could see what he was trying to do, he wanted to use his powerful physique to overpower me in close combat, but I wouldn't let him, even though he was stronger than me, his speed felt off by a lot due to his increased muscle mass. He started panting as he tried to chase me round, it was a quite fun game of tag, but it was time to end this, there was no reason to continue, I put one hand up into the air, as a giant destructo disc took the form of a giant blue shuriken, that was spinning at fast speeds. I put my other's hand free fingers on my forehead and appeared directly above cold. He ate the full brunch of the shuriken kienzen special. The shuriken kienzen immediately started spinning like a meat grinder. It started to cut off his skin, muscle, and bones into tender meat, which immediately started to vaporize due to the kai properties and the centrifugal force that was added to the spinning shuriken form. The cult clan was no longer existing in universe 7, well at least in the living realm. I decided it was time to take the rinds off this empire, disband it and create something else out of it. Even though the planet was damaged due to our fight there were still some grunts here and there shivering and waiting for the results. When they saw me they knew Cold was dead and so was his empire, they immediately fell to their knees and chanted out loud. Greetings towards the new emperor of the universe. Emperor of the universe Krellin sounded good, right? I didn't want the title, but I wouldn't mind being called that. I asked the grunts to show me where I could project my image towards all of the active and known Cold's family empire acquisitions. The grunts didn't dare to lie and took me towards a different building that fortunately didn't get destroyed during our intense fight. I entered the building, and the grunts started to input some codes and press some colored buttons on the console. A special hologram immediately started to appear on the console, it was me, and it was sent across all of the galaxies, on all of the cold planets. I cleared my throat and said. From now on, there's no cold empire anymore, King Cold and all of his heirs died to my hands, I'm the new emperor of the universe, and I command all of you to cease all of the illegal activities, the planet organization trade of the former cold empire has been cancelled. You will be briefed of the new work you would take soon enough by one of my advisors. I decided to groom Jice and Birder into advisors, they were more in the known of the cold's family system, I just needed to change what they did, and impose bans and limits on the way they acted. I could of course still pay them, what they were paid before, I wasn't a tyrant. I decided that everyone would go and restore the planets how they were originally, and if any survivors remained of the original inhabitants of the planet, they would be helped to reproduce back the race, and given ownership of the planet. I decided to not interfere in planetal politics if my people weren't involved, they would do whatever it was needed to be done before leaving the planet and going to the other ones. There were millions or even billions of planets in the universe, and while not all of them were conquered by the planet trade organization, quite a lot of them were. So it would take a while for them to fix everything, maybe by the time Gyu came, everything would start to flourish again in Universe 7. I decided to take everyone back to Earth, both Raditz and Nappa were pumped up for training, while Birder and Jice didn't want to become advisors who would have to do work all day. But I told them all they would have to do is give me the important decisions which would be reported to them by the other smaller workers, who would do all the work. I need some more figureheads so the organization wouldn't feel empty of higher echelons, former Freeze elite soldiers would put pressure onto the underlings, and make sure no one would defect. I didn't need bad intentioned aliens free in the galaxy doing god knows what, I was responsible for them now, redeeming themselves of all the evil and sins they did was the great path of the Buddha, I suddenly started to understand some of the words of the stone plaque I found on the desert planet. My power level immediately spiked to 20 million, as my kai became 1% truly golden and viscous, I could feel a special type of connection between me and the kai now, it seemed like acknowledgement. I felt that if I understood all of those words completely I would reach a maximum of 50% purifying of kai. After that, I would need to purify it with my efforts. We all arrived back at the lookout, Goku was training very hard trying to master his Super Saiyan form, combined with Akari mode, so that it wouldn't drain so much Kai, compared to before this combination drained way more Kai than a normal Super Saiyan transformation, and if he could master this one. Of course, the normal one would be mastered as well. 
I motioned towards him and imparted the knowledge of instant transmission directly to his brain. It was one of the techniques he would have learned after he left Namek, but due to my interference he couldn't get it. Goku smiled towards me and nodded his head. It seemed he liked the technique, that was Goku for you, being giddy like a little kid at every cool technique you would learn or want to learn. He immediately stopped his training in his transformed state, wanting to master instant transmission first. I let him be there was still a lot of time left before the supposed androids were to come. Trunks didn't even appear yet. And by the interactions of Bulma and Vegeta, I was sure Trunks would exist. I decided I was in for some fun time with Jika after I saved the universe from the greedy paws of a galactic overworld, intending of conquering it all for profit. The time of peace would hit the universe and earth before the androids made their entrance. Chapter 27 The Aftermath of Cold's Empire Demise on a distant planet that was shaped like a pyramid with a giant tree that stood in its middle a blue-skinned man with white hair and a peculiar outfit, looked inside a crystal ball that was embedded in his staff, as a nearby purple humanoid cat who wore pajamas was sleeping and muttering. Was food destroyed the planet food not good, bleh. Then he made a disgusted look on his face, and he was ready to shoot a purple kite ball out of his hand. The blue-skinned man known as Whis, immediately used his staff to stop the kite ball from destroying anything, he sighed and said. It seems this earthling is doing the work of the creator gods, even though the Kai can't interfere themselves in this kind of thing they could groom some champions using their divine techniques, to help the mortal realm. He sighed again and continued, and Lord Beerus is still neglecting his job, at least he should try to destroy planets with no potential at increasing their mortal level, but he never mind, I can't do much about him, I can only instruct him and not force him. On different corners of the galaxy's multiple Kais were rejoicing as they met up for a party. The West Kai was a short portly man with a monocle and purple skin, he had big elf-like ears that pointed upwards and a hat with a top that looked like a curled pigtail. The East Kai was a portly lady with yellow skin and orange hair, who wore sunglasses with red rims and black lenses. The South Kai was a tall burly man with pale pinkish skin who wore sunglasses with white rims and black lenses. The North Kai was a short portly man who wears black glasses and a hat that covered his head. All of them wore the same outfit in different colors and different kanjis on the front of it, their position was written in the front of their chest. They all wore gowns and differently colored undershirts. They all also had black antennas besides the West Kai. The North Kai immediately started gloating as he said. This guy who saved all of your quadrants is my disciple, you should repay me for teaching such a good disciple. He, of course, saved all of your galaxies, while all of your champions, couldn't do jack about cold and his men. The South Kai scoffed and he said in an annoyed tone of voice. My protege Pickin just started training, but in a few years I'm sure he could have cleaned the floor with the whole Cole family. King Kai looked at South Kai with a grin on his face as he continued his clothing. Yeah but that would be in a few years, don't you know how much damage the Cole family would have done in those years? My disciples spared all of you of the damage. The West and East Kais kept mum as they didn't have champions who were strong and had high potential, they wanted to give the blue man something just to make him shut up, he was extremely annoying. Most of the time they were the ones gloating over him, but now with his new disciple he finally got something to back him up, and it wasn't something small. Suddenly out of nowhere a pinkish skinned man with white hair with a blue undershirt and a red and yellow tinted gown, teleported over as he said in a high tone of voice. The Grand Supreme Kai is making his way over. The light purple skinned man who wore an outfit similar to the pinkish skinned man, but with blue and red instead of red and yellow appeared. He said in a light tone of voice, thanks for the introduction Kabito, but it wasn't required I'm sure everyone here knows who I am. Every Kai bowed and nodded their heads, this was their superior, he was even higher ranked than Grand Kai, who didn't have time to join this party. The Supreme Kai known as Shin nodded towards King Kai, and said with a smile on his face, I heard about your disciple's work in the mortal world, and I'm impressed with it, I also observed him and his work, his soul is pure, and he accumulated tons of good karma, he is a model citizen of the universe. I would like for you to take on this little gift of mine as a compensation for teaching such a great student. Also, send him my regards. Shin materialized a red Ferrari which he levitated nearby King Kai. King Kai gasped as his glasses almost fell off his face. He rubbed his eyes under his glasses, to make sure he wasn't hallucinating. How did the Supreme Kai know of his dream car? The Supreme Kai just smiled and teleported back towards his world with Kabido in tow. King Kai immediately started to gloat again in the faces of his fellow Kais. All Kais had a passion for fast vehicles for some reason, South Kai snorted again and said. What are you gonna do with this fast car on your small planet anyway? At the mention of this King Kai turned red in the face and then retorted. How's it my fault, Beerus sneezed and destroyed my other one. Everyone started to laugh at King Kai's words as the atmosphere lightened up after this story. Back on Earth. After I finished with my special time with Jika, I decided it was time to up the training for everyone. I used one of my entries to the hyperbolic time chamber, but from Popo's words, I still had three more uses. 
I could train everyone in there and make sure we could subdue the androids peacefully. But they were like in the original after they killed Juro, and they understood they couldn't kill Goku, because of his immense strength. They would just give up and try to live as normal humans. I also had to make sure Cell didn't get his perfect form, and maybe even absorb someone else to get stronger, since he was capable of absorbing normal humans. While in the first form, he could absorb other people for a power boost in his final form as well. If he realized he couldn't defeat me after he would hypothetically get his final form, he would try to absorb other strong people to boost his power. I couldn't let that happen at all. So I made sure after the androids were subdued to immediately identify Cell's whereabouts and destroy him till nothing remained. I appeared on the lookout and made sure everyone was there. Radis, Jiaotsu, Nappa, Vegeta who somehow didn't go into space to train this time around. Master Roshi, Tian, Yamcha, and Piccolo. They were all sparring in the gravity chamber when I teleported on the lookout. Piccolo started to mellow out around other people more after he fused with Nail on Namek, it seemed the other Namekian was influencing him a bit. Vegeta was as angry as ever, while both Raditz and Nappa still didn't catch up to him, he realized that they started to get stronger faster than him the prince, the most talented of the race. I looked at Vegeta and he still had 0s cells in the back of his neck, he could still awaken them with emotional and physical stress though, that's how he did it in the original, it would just be way harder for him. I motioned towards everyone to stop their training, and to come to me, they all stopped even Vegeta, from the expression of my face he knew I was going to announce something important. I nodded towards everyone and said. I didn't inform you of the special training room that's available in this place up till now since you were too weak both mentally and physically but now you are ready to train in there. I called Mr. Popo and he appeared out nowhere, as usual, he had a huge grin that showed his one tooth on his face, it looked extremely unnatural like he was forcing himself to smile. He didn't say anything and just let us enter the hyperbolic time chamber, I wasn't sure what was in that black genie's mind. I made them pair with each other and spar while in their strongest forms, so they could increase their base while mastering their techniques as well. Raditz and Nappa would spar with each other trying to achieve their Super Saiyan form, Goku would fight with Vegeta, I made it so Vegeta could get triggered even more, because Goku would already be a Super Saiyan, I made sure to tell Goku to never turn off his Super Saiyan in Ikari mode, to taunt the prince. Yamcha would spar with Tian and Piccolo with Rashi, Jiaotsu would focus on his mental strength by himself, while I would enter further into the chamber and train in a high amount of gravity. I left all of them to train near the entrance of the chamber, as I made my way inside the infinite white nothingness of the hyperbolic time chamber, I made sure I was far enough, so my training wouldn't disturb bears. As I turned the gravity up to 5000 times, with the gravity of the chamber being 2 times normal, it became 10,000 times normal gravity, I immediately sat cross-legged and regulated my breathing, while I endured the excruciating pain of my bones and muscles being torn. Bro back and being torn and broken again. I decided it was time fully master the Kaken, Godspeed, Super Mode and Full Power Technique combination. After I mastered this combination of techniques, I could become unbeatable to everyone besides the upper echelons of the multiverse. And maybe Bu could fight to a tie with me as well, Super Bu would make me exert myself, while Kid Bu would be easy to kill. Training inside a chamber of nothingness could make you forget about all notion of time. Two days already passed by when I stopped training. My base power level increased to 25 million, and I could use the combination of techniques plus the kick in up to 15 times. I decided to check on others, and I was surprised pleasantly by them. Goku mastered his Super Saiyan Ikari mode, making him reach the multiplier of 300x, and the base power level of 5 million and 500,000. While he couldn't beat Cold with his power level now he could still fight Cooler and win. Nappa and Raditz showed signs of becoming Super Saiyan as well, while their power levels reached up to 1 million plus each, Rashi reached a power level of 600,000, Piccolo's power level skyrocketed towards 3 million. Yamcha and Tian started to tie in power, both reaching 900,000 and some. Jiaotsu was at 200,000, Vegeta was surprisingly reaching 2 million and 500,000, Goku was still wiping the floor with him though. Suddenly both Raditz and Nappa started to shout as their power level skyrocketed by 50 times each. Nappa's mustache and tail turned golden, while Raditz's hair and tail did the same their eyes were green teal color as well now. The combination of abundant S cells, and highly intense training coupled with the adverse environment of the hyperbolic time chamber made both Saiyans reach their transformation. Vegeta was lying weakly on the ground after an intense sparring session against Goku and he started grumbling, and I could even see tears in his eyes as he banged the white floor of the hyperbolic time chamber. He started to shout, I wanna be a Super Saiyan 2 I wanna wanna. He immediately got up from the ground as he started to shout, and his power level started to skyrocket as well. His aura started to turn golden as his hair started to do as well his eyes started to flicker from black to green. But unfortunately for him at the last moment before he could truly transform he failed. As cells have been unlocked in the back of his neck, though I could see them come into being and increase over time. Raditz looked smugly at Vegeta, a low-class warrior outdid the prince of the race, he felt really good right now. 
Nappa looked with concern at Vegeta. He cared about Vegeta, as he had to take care of him since he was a child, even though Vegeta would have discarded him if he became useless. He approached Vegeta and patted him on the shoulder and said. Your brothers should train with each other from now. I will tutor the prince on learning how to become a Super Saiyan from now on. Goku and Raditz looked at each other and nodded, while Vegeta looked at Nappa with what seemed to be gratitude in his eyes. Did the prince's pride mellow out a bit after failing to become a Super Saiyan? I decided to let them off to their own devices while I increased the gravity around me, and started to continue my training, by the time the last two years were done, and we were out of the chamber. Everyone grew a big beard, and we each had to take a shower and shave before everyone was comfortable around each other. My power level increased to 50 million in these last two years. The higher my power level increased the faster it grew. Goku reached 10 million after focusing on his base form, after mastering the Ikari mode Super Saiyan combination. Vegeta attained the Super Saiyan form as well, but he couldn't master it in time. He decided that he would keep it on all the time from now on. His power level reached almost 7 million too. Nappa and Raditz had enough time to master their Super Saiyan form as well, but unlike how Goku who got a 100 times boost after their mastery, both got only up to 80 times, I wasn't sure why maybe it was innate. Their power levels reached 3 million and a half though, so it was something, Chiaosu reached almost 1 million, Rashi reached 1 million and a half, and he was still going strong, I was happy for him he seemed to enjoy getting stronger. It seems he was reminiscing about his younger years by training with us. The Amcha and Tian tied directly with each other at almost 2 million, and some, both could use cake in times 20, and their stands in combination now. Rashi could also use cake in up to 20 times in his stand, but he couldn't combine it with the full power technique as well. Tian also couldn't use his race's innate technique to combine it with his stand and his caking. But besides being unable to use my stand combined with everything else, I could say that this training in the hyperbolic time chamber this time around was a great success. I could use the maximum amount of caking up to 50 times now combined with my other techniques. It seemed I reached a wall during mental training though, while my body made my Kai training have no bottlenecks, it didn't do so for my soul. Magic training came along nicely as well in the last few months of training, I could say everything was done well this time around. Alma immediately greeted us, and she couldn't even take her eyes anymore of the now blonde and green-eyed Vegeta. For now, I could explain why trunks of this timeline could turn Super Saiyan so easily. We still had time before the androids came, but suddenly out of nowhere a time-space portal opened above the lookout, out of it came an intricate machine with the Capsule Corporation logo on the side. Out of it came two silhouettes. Wait to Chapter 28. Future Encounters and Dojo Expansions The silhouettes were starting to grow clearer as they made their way out of the time machine. One was a blue-haired youth with a blue jacket with a CC logo on the side. He had a sword on his back and blue eyes. The other was a dark-haired man with dark eyes and an orange and blue guy, with the turtle symbol on the front and back. It was Trunks and Gohan. It seemed Gohan didn't die in the future like he would in the original. Trunks looked around as he spotted us. Gohan nodded towards Trunks, and both made their way down. As the machine got transformed into his capsule form, my group looked at them warily. They could feel their immense powers while both weren't strong as Goku in his Ikari mode their base power level was 8 million for Trunks and 12 million for Gohan. Trunks nodded towards me seemingly knowing that I knew who he was. I nodded towards him with a smile on my face. The others looked at me, and Trunks wondering how I knew who the youth is. Trunks made his way towards us with Gohan in tow as he started talking. You might not believe me, but I'm from the future, my companion as well. We came here to deliver some things that can be made in the current times to save Goku. Goku looked at Trunks with a questioning gaze. He wasn't sure what would happen to him, so he posed a question himself. What will happen to me in the future? Trunks took a vial from his jacket's chest pocket and handed it to Goku while saying. This is an antidote that will save you later. You will encounter a deadly heart virus that would kill you in the future. Even though Krillin will expand your life a bit with his magic, he still couldn't save you in the end. The Dragon Balls couldn't help either as they can't heal diseases from natural causes. They couldn't revive you either due to the same cause. Goku nodded his head. He wasn't sure where he would get the heart virus though. I wasn't sure either. In here he didn't train on Yardrat, but he did drink the Ultra Divine Water. I wasn't sure if the theory of the fans of the water giving him the heart disease was true. It was never explained where he encountered the heart virus. Trunks and Gohan were ready to leave. It seemed nothing else required their help besides the antidote. Seems the androids and Cell wouldn't be a problem at all in three years from now. They both nodded towards me and everyone else before they took out their time machine again and left in it. I could see Gohan shed a few tears through the glass before he thoroughly disappeared in the time rift. It seemed he would miss Goku greatly in the future. I decided to let everyone go do their things, Vegeta was invited by Bulma to go to the Capsule Corporation for a feast, I decided that I would announce the arrival of those androids later to keep them on their toes. I also decided to teach Piccolo a stand so he could get a transformation of his as well, in the original Piccolo was the guy who never had a technique that increased his power level, I also decided to teach him the Kaken. Namex had a strong constitution which could make them able to abuse the Kaken. 
Piccolo didn't refuse he saw how the others benefited from the technique, and he wanted to catch up with everyone as well, especially Goku, I left him to his own devices as well, so he could do his thing. One month from now I would announce them with the androids coming so they could train harder. I teleported inside my dojo and made a headcount, it seemed the people who were attending increased, I decided to open dojos on everywhere on the planet now, it was time to expand to other countries. With the use of my astronomical fortune, and my connections with the Briefs family, it was easy to buy plots of land in different countries, and create dojos there, I would first teach them all personally the special mantra, before training the more talented individuals, and making them instructors. I also decided to let Jaika be an instructor in normal Australia, she would feel just like home. Well better than home, since people would listen to her and not avoid her here, she could also train herself a bit after I taught her some more advanced training techniques. I decided to also check upon Gohan, Kai Kai, Nam, and Hercule. They all got way stronger than before, Kai Kai reached the power level of 50,000 Gohan even reached the power level of 150,000, Kai Kai was astounded at the now almost 9 years old boy's speed of growth. Of course, the power level was quite negligible if you would count the original Gohan, but the original Gohan fought Frieza, and also gained some Zenkai during his expedition on Namek. The current Gohan was led to have a childhood. Nam and Hercule's power level increased to 3000 and 1000 respectively, pretty strong for humans, they could even beat some of Frieza's grunts, with their martial arts and their power level. I decided it was time for Gohan to take training more seriously, so I took him as my direct disciple, Gohan stood before me on a fluffy pillow on his knees, as I imparted him a special mantra to help him train his Kai body and mind. Till now he trained with Kai Kai, and he only knew the basic mantra taught in the dojo. Gohan started to mumble the mantra as his eyes shined. To achieve strength one needs to temper the body, Kai is elusive, but can be increased with meditation, train every day to achieve success in martial arts, a great foundation built, will lead to a great future. As he continued to chant the mantra his white aura started to grow into a sky blue, I also decided to teach him the Kamehameha, maybe I should let him train with Piccolo as well. Gohan was a bright young man with a great future, his potential was huge only below his freezes and brolies he could grow way faster now that he got a special mantra suited for him. I also decided to teach the more advanced students at the first dojo better mantras than the basic one. The better students were called Felix Kjellberg, Maximilian Muss, and Quackity. Felix Kjellberg was a blonde man of average height, he had blue eyes and wore a green and brown guy, Maximilian Muss was a buff man who wore sunglasses, his hair was a dark green, and he wore a grey and black guy, Quackity was an anthropomorphic humanoid duck who wanted to learn martial arts. The president of our country was an anthropomorphic dog, so I wasn't surprised at his looks. I decided to teach Felix the way of the Viking, Maximilian the way of the Barbarian, and Quackity the way of the Space Duck. Each of the mantras had their special pros that would help their constitution and Kai grow at faster rates than normal. After I scanned them with my Kai sense their power levels and physiques were laid bare to me. Felix had a power level of 70, Maximilian a power of 50, and the duck was surprisingly the strongest at 120. Their physiques weren't special or nothing like that, but everyone had a different physique, which would be suited to a different type of technique, there were no two humans who had the same physique. Even twins would have different body types that needed to train in a different type of martial techniques, if the martial techniques could complement each other, it would be the best for twins though. After I left everyone with new techniques I decided to let the three new best students become instructors in three different locations, Felix would go to England, Maximilian to Sweden, and Quackity would go to teach a special place. I recently discovered a place where tons of anthropomorphic animals like Quackity live, they all had their community. They were very free and let everyone come and go through their city, there was a mix of humans and humanoid animals in the city, in human cities there were also humanoid animals, but they were more of a rare find. But this city had tons. I decided to let Quackity train everyone in there at the newly built dojo. The planet was getting stronger and stronger every day, all the previous damage did by human hands was pretty much gone, global warming was no more, and the north and south pole were starting to freeze again. In a mountainous area in an unknown location we could observe an old man with grey hair and a moustache, who wore a black vest with orange pants and a top hat, with the red RR logo on it muttered to himself, while he typed some data into a giant computer. MMM, I couldn't get that Krillin's DNA, but I could get my hands on Son Goku's from when he was a child, and some of his other companions unfortunately, now that they are all gathered together, I can't let my mini droids go near them without them being spotted. I guess I can only create Cell with what I have. He seemed disappointed as his creation wouldn't reach true perfection, he didn't even have freezes in King Cold's cells. He came out of the laboratory where the computer was buried, and entered a different one a few kilometers distance away. He started to continue his work on a husk of a being, it had a pale like a clown face and grey eyes. He also wore a similar outfit to the old man with the cap that had the same logo on it. 
The old man suddenly started to cough blood as he put his hand towards his mouth as he muttered. I think my body can't last much longer. I will have to do the operation now before I can continue the modifications on Android 20. At least 17 and 18 are done, 16 can't be completed in his current state. I just have to wait for 17 and 18 to mellow out during their reprogramming now. They were quite feisty when I caught them. The old man entered a different chamber of the laboratory, and after a month came out looking the same, but he had no hat on, and you could see a glass container holding his brain. He put his hat back on, and continued working on the pale android. Back on the lookout, I decided to announce every one of the androids upcoming. The Jetta scoffed at my words and said that no washing machine was a match for the Prince of All Saints. Goku was pumped up for a fight, while Nappa and Raditz didn't particularly care. The human Z fighters got heated up for training though, they knew they weren't strong enough to fight the androids, unlike the Saiyans who got their Super Saiyan transformation. Even though they got a stand and kick in it was still a tiny bit inferior compared to the mastered form of the Super Saiyan, as the technique still drained them, while the mastered form didn't drain the Saiyans at all. I decided to let the Saiyans taste some pain, so I could encourage them to train better. I turned on 4 dots, as my power increased by 16 times reaching the power level of 800 million. I immediately blitzed in front of Vegeta, as my punch made his way inside his gut. He spat some liquids as he was knocked down, his arms started to tremble as he got tried to get back up. I put a foot on the prince's torso and pushed him back down as I said in a loud voice. The androids would be at least as strong as this, Nappa, Raditz you still can't beat Vegeta yet, even though you mastered the Super Saiyan form, what about when he does it? Raditz and Nappa looked at each other seemingly knowing that I would beat the shit out of them too, if they didn't comply with my words. Vegeta gritted his teeth at the humiliation as he suddenly buffed up, and his power level started to rival mine, it was great too Super Saiyan. He pushed me back, got up and threw a right huck at me, while well, the power increase was substantial in this form, the speed decrease was as much, I was practically dancing around Vegeta as he tried to hit me, he seemed disgruntled as he started to shout and charge his Kai. He put his hands together as Yellow Kai started to charge in it, Goku eyebrows rose as he shouted. Vegeta don't you might destroy the planet. Vegeta growled at Goku, shut up Kakarot your friend here is strong enough to take it. As he charges his final flash his power level skyrocketed higher and higher going beyond 1 billion, I just activated my fifth dot, when he shot his final flash at me, I directly absorbed it with my hands, and redirected it towards a not populated galaxy. Vegeta gritted his teeth as his transformation ran out, his buffed out muscles turned back to normal, and his green eyes and blonde hair got back to black. He was almost ready to master the Super Saiyan form, the others didn't train the Super Saiyan form anymore, so they could strengthen their base power, but Vegeta still had to. Vegeta's power level was currently 10 million, while Goku's breached 15 million, Raditz, and Nappa's reached 10 million as well, because of Vegeta's negligence of his base form. My power level also increased a bit from 50 million to 65 million. I could feel that my power would take a sharp increase in the months to come, and before the androids could make their way here in two more years and nine months, I would reach beyond 100 million, maybe even 150 million. The androids and even Cell wouldn't be a threat to me, I would let the others deal with them. Maybe I could do something that would turn Cell towards us as well. What if I restructured his genes after Jiro's death instead of destroying him? We could have one more strong Z fighter to help us. Cell was programmed by Jiro to kill Goku. That was his main mission which he ignored due to his genes and his nature overpowering the mission. If I could reconstruct his genes with the help of Bulma, we could have a good Cell albeit weaker due to the lack of some cells. I could make him train instead of absorbing people. Cell never trained and I could guess he had quite the high potential himself being an amalgamation of highly talented people. After we subdued the androids I would make sure to reconstruct the current cell and add him to the Z fighters, one more strong ally would never hurt anyone. I decided to have some fun with Jika before I entered into another closed door training, it would be quite a long time before I would get with her again, since I didn't realize how time was going by when I trained seriously. Chapter 29. The androids arrive and disappear. I woke up from my meditation under the high stress of gravity, if my internal clock was right, it's been 2 years since I started training, there were just a few more months before the androids were supposed to arrive. My power level reached 125 million, as for the others I could already feel their lower level from where I was. My Kai sense also became a lot stronger along with my Kai increase. Goku's power level reached 35 million, Vegeta reached 25 million, Nappa reached 27 million, and Raditz 26 million, Tian and Yamcha were tied again with 10 million each, Rashi reached 11 million, and Chiyosu reached almost 2 million. Dice and Berta reached 900,000 each almost nearing a million. Everyone took their training seriously and became way stronger than before, I guess Vegeta mastered his Super Saiyan form too by now, by my guess is unlike Raditz and Nappa's, he should be as strong as Goku's at 100 times multiplier. I could also feel the sacred Kai in me being purer than before reaching 2.5% of the whole Kai, I tried to use some of this pure Kai to enhance my attack with it, and the results were very good. 
I guess I could even beat people double my strength or more using the pure Buddha Kai alone. As the purity of my Kai increased the power of my Buddha stand increased as well as I started to understand more of the mantra seekers. Right now my Buddha stand could increase my power level up to 17.5 times now. After I scanned everyone I decided to check up on the dojos personally. I could feel that the average power level of the planet increased up to 120 and the upper echelons of humanity reached 1000 in number. My students Felix, Maximilian, and Quackity reached 3000, 2900 and 4000 in that order. Quackity even started to speak more correctly, even though he had a speech impediment. His feathers started to turn a deep black as well, because of the properties of the space duck mantra. Ohen's power level reached 1 million in a bit, while Kaichus reached 200,000. Even Jaika became stronger, reaching a power level of 20,000 from her original 1,000. Nam also reached a power level of 10,000, and Hercule's power level reached 1,500. During the time Hercule taught at the dojo, he took Vittle from time to time, and she met with Gohan. At first Vittle wanted to fight with Gohan, trying to show how her father taught her martial arts, and that she could beat anyone near her age. Gohan easily beat her however, her power level was just a tiny bit away from 100. I was observing from my office when the whole interaction happened. Gohan just pushed her away with a bit of Kai, and she fell on her butt and started crying calling for her father. She was just almost 11 years old. Gohan immediately bowed and excused himself, while Kai Kai berated him on not going easy on her. I swear dropped to Kai Kai's words it was impossible to go any easier, if Gohan even blew too hard at her in his full power even dust wouldn't remain. Kai Kai was still Kai Kai after all, she decided to invite Hercule his daughter and his wife to dinner, so she could mend her relationship with the fellow instructor. Hercule didn't want to impose, but he agreed in the end. I nodded my head towards them as Jais and Birder were in my office wearing glasses and reporting to me everything that happened in the galaxy currently after two years of my ruling. Krell and Sama, the West, East and North Galaxy, had been thoroughly cleaned of the remaining soldiers that were still loyal to the Cold family. The restitution plan has been done up to 20%, and it's still going strong. The Galactic Police also decided to take in custody as helpers some of the grunts from our organization. After they did a bit of screening on their past, Jais said as he fixed his glasses. He was now sporting a black suit instead of the armor. Since he and Birder became my secretaries, they had less and less time to train, since they had to compile all of the data they were given from the galaxy trough my communicator. After everything was settled I decided to leave the dojo and return to the lookout. There were only two more months left before the androids were supposed to come. But suddenly out of nowhere, I could feel some chaos stir under the lookout to a nearby island. Fires were spreading rapidly as the destruction continued down below. I immediately mentally summoned all of the Z fighters and made them come to the island. I couldn't sense the androids since they weren't living beings, no one possibly could normally. We decided to split up and search the normal way, suddenly we heard some intense battle sounds coming from a nearby street. Yamcha had found them. He was using his werewolf stand and kick in times 20 combined to battle the old man Jiro. He was fighting him equally, but suddenly Jiro struck him and grabbed him with his hands starting to drain his Kai. I quickly appeared near Jiro and struck him in the face with the Kai encased fist, making him go through a few buildings before he stopped. The fat clown android's eyes started to shine as he scanned me and said in a high-pitched robotic voice. Name, Krillin. Race, human. Power. His face started to scrunch up as he tried to go after Jiro and escape, but Goku came out of nowhere and dropped him in as he transformed into his Super Saiyan form. His power level wasn't as high as it was supposed to be, I guess the heart virus was starting to kick in. I immediately grabbed everyone the androids included and teleported all of us towards an empty wasteland, so we wouldn't get casualties, fortunately, no one died even though a few people were injured. Due to the increase of the average power level, people could now sense danger a bit, and could escape if they weren't targeted directly, which they weren't the androids only wanted to sow chaos and drag us there. Jiro and the Mime Android gasped as they knew they couldn't do anything to us, Jiro immediately blowed towards the Mime Android. 19. Activate Protocol 348934 Number Android 19's eyes started to shine red as he didn't talk anymore, Jiro was ready to make a run for it, and I let him telling everyone to not kill him, just to follow him, while I would let Vegeta deal with Android 19. Goku was already panting hard as he took some of the antidotes that Trunks gave him, unfortunately, he blacked out afterwards and fell to the ground in heap, I caught him, and took him back to his house, leaving Yamcha to take care of him. I also informed Kai Kai and Gohan that both of them could come home and look after Goku. Vegeta easily destroyed 19 now being even stronger than he was in the original series, Super Saiyan mastered and all. 19 couldn't even put up a little bit of resistance before he was overflowed with energy and exploded. He tried to absorb Vegeta's big bang attack, but his circuitry couldn't handle the massive influx of energy. As we followed Jiro around him still unknowing as I masked everyone with my magic, he made his way towards his laboratory, put in a code and entered. He immediately got towards near two giant capsules, which are the numbers 17 and 18 inscribed on them. 
Behind him was another capsule that was inscribed 60. But he ignored that one, he immediately put in some codes as he held a remote in his hand, ready to use it at the littlest wrong move made by his two creations. Out of the capsules came a dark-haired young man who wore black shirt jeans and a cowboy orange scarf, he also had a pistol holster on his right leg. As he came out of the capsule he said in a robotic voice. Unit 17 was activated, please tell me your instructions, Dr. Jiro. Jiro blinked his eyes was the mental reshaping done correctly. But he could see a glint inside 17's eyes which indicated otherwise and he said. Stop fooling around 17 I know you are faking it. 17 scoffed and scowled, out of the other capsule a blonde woman who wore a jeans jacket and skirt and brown knee high boots, came out as she tried to do the same thing as her brother, but he stopped her and said. It won't work sis, the cat's out of the bag, he knows. 18 pouted as she wanted to play with the doctor a bit, but oh well. I destroyed the door leading to the laboratory, and all of them were exposed to me, I could say that 18's beauty was my type. It was something else seeing her in person. With the distraction provided by me blowing the door up 17 immediately took the remote from Jiro's hands and crushed it while he decapitated the old man, out of his body came oil instead of blood, his hat fell off his head, and it showed his brain inside the glass container. He started to say. But I created you, you are what you are today because of me, you can't kill me. Unfortunately for him 17 stepped on his head and crushed it, making him die in the process, as blood started to splatter on the tiles of the laboratory from his brain. 17 and 18 started to analyze us with their eyes, and they narrowed their eyes, they realized we were so strong that they couldn't fight us directly. 17 immediately brought his hands up and said. It's okay folks we aren't really on the old doctor's side, he kidnapped us and made us come here, we bore no ill will towards you, actually we will be on our way now after we awaken our last brother here. He pointed towards 16's capsule. I just let them do as they wanted to, 16's giant figure came out of the capsule and said. Must eliminate Son Goku. 17 and 18 both started to sweat at the giant's words, and they said in unison. Oh brother, what if we didn't? The giant man who wore green armor with black in between and had a red mohawk, shook his head and said again. My mission is to kill Son Goku. It was time for my timely help now. I immediately interjected. I know someone who could reset his mission and let him have his free will just like you too. 18 and 17 both looked at me with narrowed eyes, not knowing what I was going about, but I continued. From your words from before I realized that you were unwilling, and didn't want to become androids under Jiro's hands, I can try to help you to become humans, and reprogram the big guy from over there, so there won't be any problems between us. Vegeta sneered he was still in his super C in form as he said. Why do we have to help these washing machines? Let's just destroy them like the fat one. I hit him over the head as 5 of my dots, were activated my power level was almost double his bar of 500,000 difference. He took a mouthful of dirt as he remained down there bit his super C in form knocked out of him. I arrived in front of the androids as I said. Excuse my friend's words he is a bit aggressive now, since he killed that other android created by Jiro. Both of them nodded their heads, but 16's eyes glowed red as he plucked one hand from his wrist, and a gun barrel was revealed. I decided to not let the giant destroy anything by directly interfering with his circuitry, by hitting him with a high dose of electricity infused Kai. He short circuited and he was knocked out. I took him on my shoulder and teleported everyone towards Capsule Corporation. There I met with Bulma and her father and I explained everything, Bulma nodded her head and said. I could eliminate this program from him, and give him free will with my dad's help won't take much, maybe a couple of days at most. I left them to do their thing and met with 17 and 18 who were waiting in the lobby, I told them the news, then asked them something else. What's with those devices hidden inside your chests they look pretty explosive. Well I already knew of the bombs I made sure they were still there by looking inside of them with my magic enhanced Kai sense. Both of them looked flustered as they said. Well um Jiro made sure that we would be obedient, so he put two high caliber bombs in our chest that would destroy us if we disobeyed him, that remote which we destroyed was what could trigger the explosives. I nodded my head towards them and said, how would you like it to be removed? Both shook their heads and said in unison, if it's removed it will explode. I smiled at the siblings antics and said, I have a method that will make it so they won't explode even when removed. I gathered the dragon balls and summoned Shenron at the lookout taking both of them with me there. Well I couldn't surely sense their power level I could guess they were around 2 billion or so. The Jetta was already stronger than them by 500,000, and it seemed Jiro gave them an energy scanner, so they knew they were outmatched. In conclusion, the android saga ended quite well, um what could I say kind of unsavory. But it wasn't done yet though after I first asked Shenron if he could transform them back into humans again to make a good impression on 18. But Shenron said that it was above his power, and that I should hurry up my wish, even though it was quite some time, since I last summoned him, he was still quite the grumpy dragon. I decided to just make all the androids have their bombs removed, which meant 16 included. Both 17 and 18 looked like a boulder was taken away from their heart, they both sighed in relief and looked towards me with gratitude in their eyes. I asked them afterward what they would like to do 17 answered. 
well I would like to become a park ranger, and maybe even marry a girl and make a family. This was my original dream before Jiro took me and made me in what I am today. 18 not at her head as well. I don't have a big dream, if I could find a man who could support me, I would be happy enough. She went towards me. Was it this easy to take 18 as my wife? Maybe I was in luck, inside 18's mind. God damn, he is so tall and so strong and so bald. She was blushing inside herself even though I couldn't see anything. This 18 had something for bald people. I decided to ask them something else before I took them towards their destinations with my instant transmission. What are your names? 17 and 18 said. Lapis, Lasley. I nodded my head towards them and said. Lapis I will let you towards a nearby park and see if you can get a job there. As for your Lasley, what would you think if you came with me? Both nodded their heads. Lasley even blushed a bit at my words. I teleported Lapis towards a nearby park, and I took Lasley with me at my house. Coincidence made that Jika was there as well. Jika was, of course, half naked as she waved at us and she said. So this could be said to be my new sister. She asked with a cheeky smile on her face. Lasley narrowed her eyes at me and said. Is this? I nodded my head awkwardly at Jika and responded to Lasley. Ah, this is Jika, my girlfriend. Lasley's eyes widened and looked towards me and Jika and back and forth once again. You already have a girlfriend. You? She seemed a bit angry, it seemed even though she still liked me, it seemed she didn't like that I already had a girlfriend. As she looked around the house she realized that I was loaded. She bit her lip, but shook her head and said, I'm not sure if I'm okay with you already having a girlfriend, this is kinda awkward for me. Well, I didn't know what to say Jika was okay with it, but Lasley kinda wasn't I wasn't sure what to do here, but Jika immediately came towards Lasley and put an arm on her shoulder and said, Krillin is a great and strong guy, let's not even talk about how he does in bed, you would experience it in time, in my culture people like him can have multiple wives who are all equal in rights, I don't mind, if you would become his second girlfriend and later wife. Lasley didn't surely know what to say, she was a bit befuddled at Jika's words, she shifted her eyes left and right, and then she looked towards my bald head and nodded it seemed she made a decision. Wait did she decide by my baldness? She struck up her chest forward and said. Even though I'm not okay with this, I can make a compromise, also no touching and no sex till we know each other better at least. Well, this was a pretty good outcome right? On King Kai's planet something that was slumbering deep inside its core suddenly woke up, a giant green skinned man with orange hair and a bandana who wore a blue outfit, and had a scar that went from the right of his forehead over the middle towards his mouth was sealed inside the core. His eyes suddenly opened as he looked around the darkness and grinned while saying. It seemed the foolish Kai isn't here anymore, and the seal weakened, I can finally go out and get back with my crew haha. <laughs> Bajak was ready to make his comeback. Chapter 30. Some fun in Bajak comes. King Kai's planet immediately started to shake as out of it came the silhouette of Bajak. He smirked to himself and looked around the planet, seeing only that King Kai's little friends were present he scoffed, it seemed he didn't care about them. He teleported out of the other world using a special technique of his making his way towards the east galaxy, where his supposed crew was last spotted. Back on Earth, I let Lasley and Jika go on a shopping spree with my credit card. While Bulma finished with Android 16's programmation, the giant hulking man got up from the cold steel table and looked around. He looked less angry than before, and he had a peaceful expression on his face. He looked towards me and said. Thanks to you and Bulma briefs I can fully enjoy life now. He bowed to us and left, I could see from the glass that a bird suddenly came to him and perched itself on his shoulder. He was a good guy inside if the mission of eliminating Goku was removed. Speaking of Goku I teleported to his house, and I could see he was feeling better, Kai Kai was using a wet towel to stop his fever, and Gohan was attentively watching, Yamcha left after Kai Kai, and Gohan made their way back. I think it was time for Gohan to become a Super Saiyan as well now, I approached him and said. Gohan, as you can see your father will not be here forever to protect the planet, I can't promise I will be forever around, I need you to come with me for something, it will make you stronger. Gohan nodded his head, he was a smart kid, and understood he was very talented regarding martial arts. His mother was also praising him quite a lot, his power level was almost a 2 million already. I took him to the lookout and made him stay cross-legged, I inserted some Kai infused with magic inside his mind, and made him watch an alternative future, where Majin Buu would destroy everything and everyone that he loved. After a while he started grunting, some tears even were shed from his eyes, and after he started shouting. And boy was his shouting loud, Mr. Popo was even annoyed as he looked at him, he was ready to slap Gohan off the lookout, but I grabbed his hand and wagged my finger at him, signaling that he couldn't do that. Popo's power level already reached 2 million a power level almost as high as Gohan's. I was impressed by his growth, but his personality still needed some work. After a while of screaming and shouting Gohan got up from his cross-legged position, as his power level started to skyrocket, his hair started to spike up and turn blonde. He couldn't hold the transformation for a long time, though as it drained him quite heavily, him not being a full Saiyan as well, and how emotionally hurt he was by the illusion, could be attributed to that as well. 
I gave him a senzu bean and he got up. He looked at me with a strange look in his eyes. He seemed that he didn't know what to tell me. He just immediately transformed into his super saiyan form. As his power level reached 100 million. He took a fighting position and I smirked. It seemed this guy wanted to spar with me. I didn't need to use any of my techniques. My power level already reached 130 million. I was stronger than him in my base. I decided to spar with him so he could get used to his super saiyan transformation. He immediately started with a kick towards my shins, as he tried to use my height against me. The little guy was a smart fighter, unfortunately, all of my experience and high power level, wouldn't let him get a win out of this spar. I jumped up letting his kick hit nothing as gravity took a hold of me, and I was staying on his leg. I punched him straightly in the face with a quick jab, letting him dazed. I grabbed him, and threw him out of the lookout. Mr. Popo did internal thumbs up at my work. Gohan immediately started to levitate using his Kai, and charged a Kamehameha towards me. I smiled and charged my own, letting them clash with each other in midair. Gohan immediately started shouting as his muscles buffed and his power level spiked. Oh ho that was quite interesting. It took Vegeta quite a bit of training in the hyperbolic time chamber, to learn to do that and Gohan could use it form his first try. I smirked as one dot started to shine on my forehead, and I pushed the Kamehameha right back at him. It engulfed him, but I made sure to lower his potency, and not hurt him very hard. His clothing was singed, and his face was black with soot from the explosion of the Kai. He looked quite comical, his blonde hair turned back to black, and his eyes reverted from their green color to black. He knew he couldn't get anything out of the spar so he decided to stop, I decided that I wouldn't let him leave in such a condition. I used my materialization technique in combination with some magic to clean him and change his clothes into my own personalized guy. It was a yellow and green combination of the original monk guy from the Oran temple, it had the character of Buddha on the front and back. It looked pretty good, I decided that everyone from my dojos will wear this from now on. The Warren Temple from my childhood was never forgotten, I secretly helped them with money, and now they were well off, they were basically like an orphanage who taught children martial arts if they wanted to now, and they were funded by me and Capsule Corporation. Oma liked my idea and decided to chip in with some money as well. I teleported back to my house and I could see it was a mess. It was full of shopping bags everywhere I could see Lazuli and Jika try out some of their new clothes. Jika was wearing skin tight jeans and a green blouse and some blue brand sneakers. Lazuli was wearing a skin tight blouse that accentuated her mounds. She wore leggings with a red skirt and knee high boots. They changed from outfit to outfit unknowing that I was observing them from the side. Suddenly I coughed and both of them gasped looking at me. It seemed women took their clothing very importantly. Lazuli immediately jumped towards me and took me in an embrace while saying. I knew you were loaded, but you are the richest man on earth. You do know how to make a girl happy don't you? She had my credit card between her fingers as she said this. Jaika looked at us and smiled. I asked if she wanted anything else and she responded. Nothing much, having a lot of money is good, but all of these clothes are enough for me. Maybe I don't know let's go out on a date. Daika interjected as well. Yeah let's go out on a date, we never went out, all the time you are either training, or helping the others save the universe, or whatever, let's have some fun. I decided to comply with the lady's will, fortunately dating wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, we first got to an amusement park, ate some candy floss, etc, tried some games, just like normal humans would do. It was quite a refreshing change of pace instead of meditating under a gravity machine for years on end, it was pretty fun. After we had a copious dinner at a fancy restaurant we decided to go home, we all had quite a bit of alcohol during the dinner, but as martial artists, we could flush it effects at will, Lazuli wouldn't even get influenced by it, due to her cyborg enchantments. We got home, and Jaika was already pretty inviting with all of the words she was saying, Lazuli wasn't sure what to do though, it seemed she wasn't ready to go to the last step, besides holding hands we didn't even kiss yet. It was all too fast for her, I just kidnapped her and made her my girlfriend. While she was pretty accepting of everything she didn't know how much she could push herself during such a short period, and I couldn't blame her, it was all too sudden. I patted her on the shoulder and said. If you don't want to join us you don't have to. She shook her head, she was still a teenager at heart, she looked in her 20s at most, I wasn't sure when Jiro got her hands on her and made her who she was, but I doubt she had many dates if any at all. She seemingly decided in that instant when I asked her, she looked towards me then towards Chika and said. Please instruct me well. I smiled towards her words and invited her towards the bedroom. Our 18 scene starts. It was obvious Lazuli didn't know much about the ways of the man and woman, so I had to teach her slowly. I slowly took off her blouse and started to kiss her gently. Jaika looked from the side, her hand already slid down her pants, but she slowly started to play with herself as she moaned. Lazuli didn't stop me when I started to kiss her, she tried her best to reciprocate my action. I started to use my tongue to invade her mouth, and she accepted. We immediately started a battle of tongues, after we finished a bit of saliva was still dripping off the corner of her mouth. Her eyes were glazed seemingly enjoying the sensation and aftertaste. I immediately made both of them undress as I did so myself, my member was already rock hard, and when Lazuli saw it's the size she gasped and blushed. 
I took a good look at Lazuli's naked body, and I could realize why the Dragon Ball fandom was obsessed with her. She was the most beautiful woman in the series for sure. I made them stay on top of each other, as I started to lick their nether regions both at the same time, from their moans and words they enjoyed it very much. After a while they both climaxed at the same time, their juices thoroughly covered my face as I licked some off my upper lip. Since I made them feel good it was my time now. I took my hardened member and inserted it inside Lazuli's lower region, she gasped, and even a bit of blood came out, it seemed she was a virgin. Due to android enchantments though no pain was felt by her. I immediately started to move inside her at fast speeds, she gasped and moaned at my speed, I could hit all her sweet spots. After 10 minutes she finally gave up as her eyes rolled in the back of her head and she came. Daka looked at me with hungriness in her eyes, my dick immediately became hard again as I rammed myself in her as well, she started to grunt at my roughness, but she enjoyed it, I entered and left her special place as she gasped moaned and made some other sexual noises continuously. Just like Lazuli I increased my speed and made her faint as well. This time I forgot to stop my sperm in time when I had sex with Lazuli, unknowingly to me. But I did stop it when I did it with Jika, it was more like an instinct after we had sex so many times. Our 18th scene end. I got out of the bed and let the two take their needed sleep, I wore back my clothes, and decided it was time for me to reconstruct Cell. I teleported towards Capsule Corporation and called Bulma over. When she heard about how I found another of Dr. Jiro's projects as a scientist who loved to explore the unknown she immediately wanted to follow me. I took her to the hidden lab and entered through the secret trap door which didn't take me long to find. She looked at the red cell inside the glass with wonder, she looked at the words inscribed on the paper beside it, and she gasped in surprise while saying. This thing has the cells of Goku, Yamcha, Piccolo, Tien, even your girlfriend's Jika. It also seems it has some incomplete cells from Vegeta Raditz and Nappa as well. I rose my eyebrows he got his hands on the Saiyan cells as well. Well there were some times when I let them train on the lookout, and I wasn't with them, maybe that was when the little droids took some of their DNA samples, but in fear of not being discovered. They couldn't take a lot so that's why it said incomplete. I decided to tell Bulma about my plan now, on how we should reconstruct the being's mission and personality attributes, so we could add it to our team. Bulma hummed and said. It can be done, but not here teleport this to Capsule Corporation, it will take me and my father a while, but it can work. I decided to do as she said and teleported the whole laboratory to the free backyard of the briefs. I could sense Vegeta's Kai in Bulma's room, and also another small Kai that was in the thousand seams trunks was already born. And he was already quite old considering his power level, Bulma didn't interact with us much these days it seemed this was why. I left Cell in the trusty hands of Bulma and Dr. Briefs. Goku was already waking up from his coma from what I could feel, and his power level increased up to 40 million, due to his near-death experience from the virus. His power level increase would be welcomed since I could feel a huge power level coming towards Earth. A spaceship suddenly struck a nearby city, as some silhouettes made their way outside of it. Bajak and some people that looked like they were the same race as he appeared. Bajak gave out some orders in a loud voice. This planet is strong and full of vitality Bujin, Kogu, Zanjibido, clear the inhabitants, so we can sell this rock to the highest bidder. Goku teleported here immediately after he felt the hostile power levels come, Vegeta, Tien, Nappa, Rashi, Yamcha flew over as well, Gohan came in tow with Goku. I decided to observe, I always fought the big fights, it was time to let the Z fighters have their own now, they needed it for their growth. And Bajak and his lackey are were what the group needed, even though I wasn't sure who they were, I could feel their strong power levels. Goku would have some trouble against Bajak, but he could beat him in the end, while the lackeys would be a good fight for the human Z fighters. Chapter 31. The fight and other things. Goku looked at Bajak with wary eyes he could feel the space pyre's power, it was pretty goddamn high 4 billion in sum, while his power level increased from the Zenkai he got from his heart virus, he wasn't sure if he could beat him without a hard fight. But he also got excited at the prospect of a hard fight, just so saying like, the planet was in peril, and he was excited, but well he knew, that I could beat Bajak whenever I wanted, so it wasn't a big thing for him. Vegeta looked at Bajak with the same eyes as Goku, Radis and Appa as well, it seemed all the Saiyan were itching for a fight, the human Z fighters were ready to intercept the others at a moment notice if they made the wrong move. They couldn't let them hurt the innocent humans on the planet, so they could sell the planet. It seemed Bajak didn't get the news, that planet trading was specifically banned nowadays. It seemed he just got his crew, and searched for a nearby planet with high vitality to do his debut. So space pirate-like, and by that I mean dumb. Goku's eyes immediately started to turn feral, and his power level increased by 10 times his hair started to spike, and turned blonde yellow aura started to encase him. He nodded towards the human Z fighters and his other fellow scenes, indicating that he was going to take Bajak first. Vegeta grumbled and said. Kakar how come you are going first? Goku then said. How do you want to get this done Vegeta, it's not enough time for a spar, what about rock paper scissors? 
The human Z fighters who had dropped at the two Saiyans' antics, the planet was in peril, and they were going to fight for whoever was going first for a fight. They did a round of rock paper scissors and Vegeta won. He put on a triumphant smirk towards Goku and transformed immediately into a Super Saiyan, and launched himself towards Bajak. Bajak smirked at the prince and attacked at the same time, they met in the middle their punches showering the planet with shockwaves. I of course cancelled the shockwaves so no civilians would be hurt. The people with higher power levels, my students could feel the power exhibited at this fight, and they were pretty startled by it. I comforted them telepathically telling them that it would be an easy fight that won't take more than a few hours. My Kai sense could feel the whole planet, so I knew how my students felt. As Vegeta was duking it out with Bajak, the human Z fighters were easily dispatching his cronies. Yamcha fought Bido, Tian was fighting Kogu, and Gohan was fighting Zanja, finally, Piccolo was against Bujin. The cronies' fights weren't anything they were extremely weak compared to the collective power of the Z fighters, they couldn't put much of a fight at all, and got exterminated. The main course was Bajak. Vegeta and Bajak fought back and forth, while Bajak was frowning as he saw his cronies get obliterated by the Z fighters, he didn't particularly care about their well-being, but it would be more annoying to sell the planet and exterminate its inhabitants by himself. Vegeta taking advantage of him being distracted sucker punched him in the face, and he was thrown around like a pinball. A red imprint of a fist appeared on Bajak's face as he got up from the rubble, created by the impact of his back with a nearby building. Vegeta smirked at his win and started to charge a big bang attack, Bajak smirked as well as he unfurled his cloak and started to power up, his skin started to turn light green, and his hair deep red, his muscles increased as his power level increased without end. Vegeta's smirk suddenly disappeared as he let loose of his big bang attack, Bajak easily deflected it into the sky where it exploded. Vegeta knew he was no match for him anymore, but before he could let Goku take the fight Bajak immediately appeared in front of him, and kicked him in the dick. A sound like a strangled duck came out of Vegeta's mouth as he was thrown into some buildings destroying them in the process. His Super Saiyan form was off as he got up from the ground debris falling off him as he said in a high-pitched voice. Why did he kick me in the dick? Why? I choose not to comment to Bajak's targeted area, Goku's aura immediately flared as his power level skyrocketed up to 300 plus times of his power, Bajak was equal with him now in his buff mode. Goku got into the turtle style stance and threw himself at Bajak at immense speeds. Bajak didn't know martial arts he was simply a strong pirate. Goku fainted Bajak using the after image technique and appeared behind him, driving his knee in his back, and punched him in the back of the head afterward, with a Kai infused fist. Dazed by the attack Bajak couldn't stop Goku in time, as a fully charged Kamehameha wave hit him from behind. Bajak was singed and bruised, he was extremely annoyed at Goku's tactics, but he smirked, he suddenly disappeared and appeared in front of Gohan. He took Gohan by the neck and was ready to snap it. Unfortunately for him, I appeared in front of him all six dots in their splendor, my base power level was already above 200 million by now, combined with my full power technique, as well I could defeat him easily. I hit him in an echo point in his hand, making him let go off Gohan, I healed Gohan up and took him a bit away from Bajak. Bajak's face was unsightly as he couldn't feel his hand anymore, Goku immediately said. Krillin heal his hand back up, I won't fight him without any interruptions, and thanks for saving Gohan, his face was pretty scary right now, after Gohan was almost killed by Bajak, I could already feel Goku's power level bubbling up, he wasn't going Super Saiyan 2, but he got an anger boost. I decided to let go of the Kai I inserted in Bajak's echo point, so he could use his hand again. Bajak started to move his hand when suddenly Goku immediately appeared above him and kicked him in the head. Well, his hand was okay now so he was basically at full power. He grabbed Bajak by the arm and spun him around, threw him in some buildings, and used instant transmission to appear right behind him, before he could go through more, his fist reared with yellow Kai, he directly punched a whole trough Bajak's chest. Bajak spouted out a mouthful of blood as he grinned, and tried to ram his arm trough Goku's chest as well, fortunately, Goku kept his guard up, and caught his hand just, right before he could penetrate his chest. He started to overpower Bajak and he forcefully moved his arm in such a way it broke it. Goku looked at Bajak and said. You are pretty strong, but you came to earth with evil intentions, unfortunately, that means it's the end for you here. Goku always liked to fight with stronger and stronger people, some of the time he even tried to get them to the good side, just like he converted both Vegeta and Piccolo, but for some, there was no way. Goku let go of a huge amount of Kai from his hand and evaporated Bajak, transforming him into nothing but dust. He sighed as his hair and eyes reverted, he smirked towards us as I threw him a senzu bean which he took and ate with a smile on his face. It seemed another crisis was averted for Earth. That brief's house inside the laboratory that cell was conceived in, the tiny cell that was in the laboratory's glass, started to grow and grow, Bulma, and Dr. Briefs looked on with fascination as a bug-like thing started to form. It grew from a larval state towards a more humanoid state, then fully formed as a humanoid with red skin, a strange orange face mask and elongated ears, he didn't look like the original cell at all. 
He broke through the glass and looked around. I already teleported over the moment I felt him. He bowed towards me and said, Master. Alma started to explain how she ingrained the memories that I was his master, and gave him a bit of free will, erased the other missions which would put innocent people in jeopardy. He didn't wear anything but he wasn't naked, he had a red keratin armor over his skin, it also seemed he had no private parts, of course, like the normal cell he wasn't truly male nor female. I decided to give him the same name. From now on your name will be Cell. Alma scoffed and said. You called him Cell because he was made from the cells of others. How unoriginal of you. While I felt quite lazy right now I didn't want to think of a new name for him, Cell was good enough, even though he wasn't the same Cell his base was the same. I could spot no tail on him, it seems Bulma removed his absorption capability. I could feel his power level being a little below 600,000, he was pretty goddamn strong considering he was just born. He also had some basic martial arts memories from the DNA. He knew a few of our techniques as well, but since the DNA was from some older times he had no stand no kick in our other techniques. I decided to teach him the way to make his stand and the cake in and let him train on his own, I also gave him my special guy, since I was practically his master. I decided to check up on my other disciples before meeting up with Lazuli and Jaika, Quackity's power level was increasing along nicely, the same could be said about Felix and Maximilian, Quackity's appearance started to look more humanoid, but at the same time more duck as well. He actually started to resemble Daffy Duck from Looney Tunes, actually this gave me an idea, I asked him to come to my office in the Animal Human Dojo and told him, I have some more special work for you to do, also what do you think about the name Duck Dodgers? Quackity said with a no-nonsense face. Well, I don't mind some other work, teaching these brats around here is quite boring, about the name I find it quite to my liking, it sounds pretty nice why do you ask? I nodded my head towards him and said, from now on your name will be Duck Dodgers, I prepared a ship for you, which you will use to spread my doctrine trough the universe, with the briefs family help I created some droids, which can help you create dojos on every livable planet in the universe. Duck Dodgers gasped, not knowing what to say, this was a pretty important mission, but he saluted me with his arm, he now had arms and fingers everything, he was a fully humanoid duck. He said with a serious voice, I'll do my best Master Krillin. His spaceship was just like in the show, a big blue and white spaceship, it was fully packed with robots and construction materials and books with my mantras and basic techniques. I also got him a cadet, it was a humanoid pig, he wore a purple suit, and Dodgers wore a blue suit, they were special space suits made with my materialization technique, the resemblance was uncanny. Both of them saluted me and took off with the ship, with their efforts I would have dojos everywhere in the universe one day. I teleported towards my house and I could see that Lazuli was eating pickles, this was quite strange, she never told me she liked pickles. Jacka was looking at her strangely seemingly knowing something that I didn't. Immediately Lazuli ran over to the bathroom and vomited, it seemed something was wrong with the pickles. Then something hit me, strange cravings, sickness. Could she be pregnant? But I always made sure to not come inside them, but that first time maybe I forgot. After she finished vomiting she walked towards me and smiled, I wasn't sure what to say, and directly asked her. Are you pregnant? She nodded towards me her smile was getting even bigger, it seemed she wanted a child. Yeah, Krillin isn't this great. I nodded my head, well what's done is done, even though I didn't feel like having a child yet, there wasn't anything wrong with it, sometimes you had fun and sometimes you ended up with a child. Since I was going to have a child her, it was only proper we would be married as well, it wasn't hard to set a marriage date with my money, everything would be done extremely quickly. A few days later we were married, all of my friends were there, Rashi was ogling the maids that were serving food, Kai Kai was smiling towards me, and Goku was waving his hand, Bulma looked around and nodded towards me. The others were happy for me as well. I wore a black groom suit and 18 was wearing her bride dress, the ceremony didn't take long, and we were officially married, but things weren't done yet, Jaika appeared as well, similarly in another bride's dress, I was getting married to two women today. The saints were scarfing down the food like there was no tomorrow at the table, I was making a toast which everyone reciprocated, the wedding was a full success. Eight months later Marin was born, she looked just like in the Anime. I wasn't sure what power level Marin had in the show, but her power level, when she was born, was already at 40,000. After she was fed by Lazuli I took her in my arms as she started to laugh at me, I put a finger up, and she grabbed it with her tiny hands. Jaika got up and immediately said. I want a child as well. I already had a headache, whatever one more child wasn't going to kill me, Marin was pretty cute, as for taking care of her, while she grew up, I would hire someone to take care of her and help Lazuli, I would play with her from time to time, I still had to train for Majin Buu, I was stronger than a normal Super Saiyan 2 by now, but even a Super Saiyan 3 couldn't do jack against Fat Buu. Before I got back to training I had some fun with Lazuli and Jaika, I made sure to not stop my sperm entering Jaika now, but to stop with Lazuli, two children were enough for me. 
it was time to train some more. There were quite a few years before Majin Buu came. From now it would be 9 years. Trunks was already 3 years old. And he would enroll in the Budokai Tenkaichi at 13 years old. Goten should also be born by now. I decided to continue training in meditation under increased amounts of gravity. I let out my gold aura as I started to levitate. From now on I would train daily and sometimes come out to hang out with Marin, Lazuli and Jaika, and to not forget to be present to my other child's birth as well. I closed my eyes as I set alarm to make sure I would wake up out of meditation, I could meditate. For years on end if I got entangled in a dot chapter 32. Two years gone by. It has been two years since the Bajak event, my power level skyrocketed to the amount of 300 million, everyone else got stronger as well, Marin was growing along nicely, Jaika also gave birth to a baby boy with pinkish skin and white hair, like me had no visible nose. I decided to name him Ryu. Contrary to my thoughts from the past it was quite fun being a father, Lazuli, and Jaika also enjoyed the company of the children, Marin also liked to play around with her little brother, Marin was now almost 3 years old, and Ryu was 1 year and a half. The others also trained, but their power level didn't increase as much mine. Goku barely reached 90 million, Vegeta reached 65 million, and the other Saiyans reached a bit below 50 million. The humans reached above 10 million in power, and they could combine their stance with their Kaken. Tien even made some progress on the combination of his racial technique with his Kaken and stand. As for me I could use all the techniques combined bar the benevolent Buddha stand, I feel like all the techniques could be combined into one, when all of the Kai in my body transformed in sacred Kai, right then there would be a qualitative change in the Kai. My power level was already extremely high now if I used all of the techniques, I think I could even give Super Buu a run for his money now, also my sacred Kai was 10% of my whole Kai now, my Buddha stand's power level multiplier also increased to 25 times normal. I feel when my Kai increased to 100%, my Buddha stand power level multiplier would increase to 250 times. As I was playing around with Ryu and Marin in my house while Jaika and Lazuli were out shopping, I could feel Goku's Kai approaching, he was with Gohan and another small Kai. It seems Goten was already as old as Ryu by now if not 6 months older. I opened the door before Goku could knock, and he had his usual goofy smile on his face. I smiled towards him and nodded. Gohan was 13 or so now, his power level also reached 11 million by now. In Goku's arms was a little guy that was the spitting image of him as a young child. They were twins. I looked at him and said. Ho ho, Goku already on your second child. Goku smiled sheepishly and handed Goten to his big brother and said. Yeah. I wondered if our children could play together while we sparred. I could feel Vegeta's Kai coming along as well. Trunks in tow. Trunks should be one year older than Marin by now. Vegeta came landed and scoffed at us. He was wearing his suit from the Buu Saga. It seems he gave up on the Saiyan armor for now. In his arms was Trunks, he was a bundle of energy as he shouted. Dad here's where I will play with the other kids. Vegeta nodded and let him go, Goten also seemed like he wanted to go as well, even though he couldn't talk, yet there was a glint in his eyes that suggested so. Gohan let him in go, and the four of them started to play in the house. I let the trained babysitter watch over them, it was a woman who frequented my dojo, so she could handle the little bundles of energy, a bit not by much, I instructed her if anything out of hand happened she could call me. I nodded towards them and asked. How are the others? Vegeta scoffed and said. It seems Nappa was talented in what you earthlings call, being a movie producer, and he got a job in Hollywood. Goku continued after Vegeta. Raditz doesn't do much these days, after he comes from the dojo he just trains heats, and goes back to sleep, sometimes he goes out in the city, but I'm not sure, why he is being secretive about it. Nappa having a flair for the entertainment industries, and Raditz maybe finding love, things happened in years, while you were occupied. I asked Vegeta why he was here and he responded. I felt Kakarot come here with his sons and I knew he wanted to spar with you, I, of course, came to spar with you as well, then he grumbled something under his breath, and that goddamn woman made me take care of Trunks as well. It seemed he wanted to put the responsibility of taking care of Trunks on someone else and fight. Well, that sounds about right. I created a stage with my materialization in my huge backyard and invited them over. Since Goku and Gohan came first they would be the first who will get to fight. Goku stepped on the stage and entered the turtle school stance, I did the same, and we both bowed towards each other. Goku immediately used the Kaken to match my power level I smirked as we lunged at each other. Goku immediately used the instant transmission to appear behind me, and tried to kick me in the back, but I did the same thing, and I used my Kai enhanced fist to try to hit him in the chest. He dodged using a higher burst of the Kaken, and used the after image technique to appear above me. He tried to punch me in the head, but I grabbed his fist and threw him some feet away, he almost lost his balance, and I kicked him in the chin making him fall. The Kai sword was put towards his neck indicating his loss. He smirked towards me as his eyes suddenly turned feral and his hair golden, he destroyed my Kai sword and tried to punch me in the head, I activated my 6 dots and the full power technique, and offset his punch with my palm. Lightning started to appear around me as a ball of Kai was created in my palm which I rammed in his abdomen. 
though Kazair was taken out of him as he gasped before he could recover, I kicked him in the head, and his transformation receded. This was my win like always. I healed Goku and he got off the stage, it was time for Gohan now. Gohan got on the stage and directly used his Super Saiyan transformation. In the time from when he learned up till now he mastered it. I could see it by the light shading his hair had, and the way he handled himself while transformed. I smirked, Gohan was way more talented than Goku, but had a pacifist nature unlike the Saiyans. This held him back in fulfilling his true potential. It was sad, but during the most intense moments, he would burst with potential which saved the day back in the original. I couldn't force Gohan to train if he didn't want to, it seemed he took more of a shining to martial arts now though. We both bowed as I reverted some of my techniques, so I could overpower him too much. He started by with a sweep kick, trying to take me off my feet, and offset my balance, before he tried to hit me with some Kai Blasts. Every fighter had his style, Gohan's leaned more on using the opponent's power against him, but if he was stronger than the opponent he would just bash them like any other Saiyan. It was a combination of his human intellect and his Saiyan instinct. I was impressed by his style, I decided to reflect some Kai Blasts at him, and hit him with some of my own. I was still way stronger than him even though I used fewer techniques, all he could do was dodge and not take anything head on or he would lose. I smirked, even though he was smart he still had to sharpen his Kai sense, I didn't try to hit him with all of the Kai blasts. As he looked around he realized he was surrounded by Kai balls, he gasped as I put my hands together and said. Hell's own grenade. Some place in the wasteland on earth Piccolo got up from his mediation as he cursed. Someone stole my technique. The Kai Blasts hit Gohan head on, he got out of the cloud that appeared due to all the Kai Blasts, hitting him clutching his arm and panting hard, this was one of my wins as well. I healed him as well as he got down from the stage. Now it was time for the last fight for today, me versus Vegeta. Vegeta immediately shouted as his hair turned golden, and his eyes green, but he didn't stop he continued to shout as his hair turned even spikier and electricity started to surround him. It seemed due to unknown reasons Vegeta was the first to achieve Super Saiyan 2. His power level skyrocketed beyond 13 billion, he still wasn't as strong as Goku concerning multipliers, but he did achieve a higher form than Goku, we could say he got a win this time. I didn't need to use any other technique besides all of my 6 dots to fight him, so I just fought with him as I fought with Gohan, albeit with Gohan I used fewer dots. Vegeta just instantly threw himself at me, after he finished transforming, I took him head on he was still way weaker than me, we both fought back and forth as shockwaves appeared around us, he tried to grab me and blast me with his palm, but I pushed him aside and kicked him in the knee before punching him in the face. I charged up a spear sword on my fingers, and I tried to cut him a bit to scare him, he started to dodge frantically as the lightning around him intensified so did his ore. I stopped using the spear sword and appeared behind him and said. Nothing personal Vegeta and I kicked him in the back with all of my strength making him plummet down on the stage, and almost destroying it, spider cracks appeared on its foundation, and tons of dust rose in the air, Vegeta was down there his transformation knocked out of him as he was panting for breath. I made sure to control my strength so I wouldn't knock him out unconscious. I offered myself to heal him, but he declined, he was still a bit prideful after all. Somehow the children didn't destroy the house completely when we entered to get a snack. It was a mess, yes, but nothing the maids couldn't fix in a few tens of minutes, I clapped my hands, and tons of robot maids made their way inside cleaning up the mess at fast speeds. Some of the maids, were finishing up the cooking as we made our way to the table, the children had their table, where they were eating as well. We started to eat, and the Saiyans and half Saiyans started to eat like it was no tomorrow. I ate at a moderate pace, and before long all the food was finished. Lazuli and Jaika were coming home as well. They both greeted the Saiyans with smiles on their faces, and asked how their wives were doing. Goku responded normally, saying that Kai Kai was still working at the dojo, while he continued to do his farming which he now took seriously, she couldn't be the only one who brought money home. Vegeta just said Bulma was working on some new gadget of hers, and that's all he told us. After all the food was eaten Vegeta Goku and Gohan decided to leave, Goku took Goten in his arms, and Vegeta took Trunks, as they waved goodbye towards Marin and Ryu, I followed them out and bid them goodbye. It was time to do my monthly visit to Master Rashi as well, so I just teleported there. Like always the master was watching his show when I appeared on the island, I shouted to him so I could get his attention. Master I came to visit. He immediately coughed and turned off his TV, he came out in his signature outfit of a palm tree orange shirt and white shorts, he still had his turtle shell on his back, and the same cane he always used. I smiled towards him, I never forgot to visit Rashi as he was like a grandfather figure to me. Goku also visited from time to time, Rashi smiled to me and said. Goku visited yesterday I wondered when you will turn up, I thought you forgot about little old me. I laughed and embraced him, Rashi reciprocated the embrace and asked. How's little Marin and Ryu? I responded with a smile on my face. They are growing up along nicely, even though they do quite a mess from time to time, they are children, so I let them be. Rashi looked at me with a reminiscing gaze and said. 
It feels like yesterday you just started your training with the weighted turtle shell, and now you are one of the strongest in the universe. Oh how time goes by. He continued afterward with a perverted smile on his face. So do you know anything about launch? I coughed and sweat dropped, this old man's hobbies never change. She's with Tian now old man, you should take your mind off her. Rashi deflated at my response and afterwards said. Can't you find me a young woman from your disciples? Come on do a favor for your old master. Well, I couldn't tell him no he looked at me with those pitiful eyes, so I said. If you can find one woman who decides to follow you willingly from my dojo, you can bring her home if she agrees. Rashi immediately flew at sonic speeds directly to the most nearby dojo. I sweat dropped and let him be, hopefully, he won't scare too many of my disciples. Oh, who am I kidding I directly teleported to the dojo he chose, and decided to investigate everything from my office. Rashi did try to court many young ladies, but most of them didn't even try to speak with him, he looked downcast, as no one tried to interact with him. A light bulb suddenly appeared over his head as he motioned to me to come out of the office, and he said in a loud voice. Disciple Krillin, master from the turtle school came for a visit. I sweat dropped again it seemed this old man was bent on his shameless ways, I decided to continue entertaining him as I made my way out of the office and said. Oh, master you came to visit. Rashi puffed up his chest as he used his full power technique, and started flexing trying to get some attention from the ladies. Yes I wanted to see how my brightest disciple is doing, and I can say you are doing pretty well for yourself right now. Some of the women's eyes started to shine as they realized our relationship, they immediately swarmed to Rashi and started to talk with him, they knew I was married, so I was off limits for them, but Rashi was my master and single. I nodded my head, this should leave the old master with his hands full for a while, and happy at the same time too. I decided to check up on Cell as well, and I was extremely surprised by his progress. His power level skyrocketed to 30 million already, and he could use the Kaken to his maximum capability of 20 times. His stand was getting along nicely it was quite strange, the image behind him changed from time to time, to the original base form Cell to the imperfect Cell, and sometimes to perfect Cell. Till it stabilized to the base form Cell under my supervision. If I guess correctly his stand could evolve just like mine. Right now his stand gave him an increase of 5 times, but as it increased I wasn't sure where it would stop. After I gave him some instructions and patted him on the shoulder I left him to his own devices. I checked upon Duck Dodgers as well, and he already created some dojos in the North Galaxy, at the rate they were going in a few tens of years, the whole North Galaxy would have my dojos, but it was too slow. I decided to send Felix and Maximilian in space as well. I gave them a similar ship to both and sent them. They didn't reject as they wanted to have space adventures as well, while well, they spread my doctrine and grew stronger by fighting different martial arts as well. I needed more disciples to be instructors on Earth though, but Earth was full of talents nowadays, and I could find someone quickly, this young man was going by the nickname of Rhyme Style, and his power level was quite high, almost 10,000. He was of average height, and he had quite the average build as well, but he was proficient in the use of Kai. I took him as my disciple and taught him the Whale Mantra, since it was the best suited for his physique. I also found some others which could be used as instructors, and I also gave some of them the right to appoint new instructors as well. Nam, Hercule, and Kai Kai already had those rights. Zack and Cody were a pair of twins which could use special attacks in tandem, Zack was quite a bit reckless, while Cody was the brains. All of them could make up for the others who left. I decided to continue my training and wait for Majin Buu's arrival, if nothing untoward happened, I would remain on Earth till Majin Buu and the Biddy made his appearance. Hopefully, nothing could happen now. Well that is it for now make sure to like and subscribe that would mean the world to me, and thanks for viewing this video, if you want to see more wait for the next part with that out of that way goodbye.